This is rhubarb fresh out of the garden. Just pulled it just five minutes ago. Anyways, you want to cut that into half inch pieces. You need about three and a half cups or about one pound. Usually the first thing I do is I get rid of the part that is toxic to humans, which is the leaf. Toxic to humans because it has oxalic acid in it. Oxalic acid is what beekeepers use to treat for varroa mites. Also anything that has like a damaged part on it from a bug or anything like that. So I'm basically just inspecting the stems and getting rid of the bad parts and anything that's got a leaf. Some of these are really small rhubarb and that's because I had a deer get into my rhubarb and ate all the leaves off of them, which is also toxic to deer. I'm sure that deer had a very upset stomach for a while, which is evident by the fact there was deer crap everywhere leading away from the scene of the crime. And uh, so I went ahead and pulled all of those because without leaves, they, that, that stalk wasn't really doing anything to help that plant or not. Just got rid of them also. That's actually just the skin part that is messed up. I don't want to cut the whole stem off though. But these ones here that have like the brown tops, that's where the deer ate the leaves off. I just want to get rid of the brown top part of it. First thing I'm going to do is get this set up and zeroed to my bowl. I'm already in ounces, which is perfect. And we'll drop these in here and see what we actually weigh. You know, if we're close to a half a pound, that means I need to reduce the recipe by half. If we're more than a half a pound, maybe I only need to reduce it by three quarters. So I'm at 7.2 ounces, 16 ounces is a pound, so we're slightly less than a half. I'm still just gonna go ahead and do the full recipe. It'll be all right. For this next step, you need to put a half cup of sugar, two tablespoons of water, and the rhubarb into a pan on medium heat. There's one tablespoon, two tablespoons, half cup of sugar, and the rhubarb. What you're going to do is you're going to bring this to a boil then reduce it to a simmer for about 12 minutes until your rhubarb is tender and squishy. As this starts to thicken, you need to make sure that you stir it more. When your time is up, transfer the mixture from the stove back into the bowl and just set it aside. And there's what that looks like. The next thing you want to do is take about eight ounces of strawberries. I like to use frozen strawberries. These are fresh strawberries. They're just frozen because the colder everything is for this, the better off you are in the long run.
going to show you a trick that I use to see if this is ready for the next step. If you've got a thermometer, whether it's a candy thermometer or a digital thermometer, you want to check and make sure you are pretty close to 40 degrees. Now, this has been sitting out here a minute or so while I set up the camera, but I'm going to stick it back in the freezer until I get this bowl set up. And I'll show you what we do next. I keep it in the freezer all the time. Another tip I'm about to give you is make sure you've got this actually turned on before you pour the stuff in. Then we just let this churn for like 20 minutes. And I'll bring you back to the next step. So as it starts to get thicker, this is when you need to start thinking about how thick do you want it to get. I generally like to go ahead and stop it now and then what, do what they call finish it off in the freezer. So I'll stop it now, scoop everything into a ice cream tub that you can buy these on Amazon, I'll link to below. And then I stick that in the freezer for about two hours to finish it up. And that comes out to be about the perfect consistency. So let me show you how we do that. You can see it's pretty thick. So now what we're going to do, we're just going to take what's in this here. We're just going to put it into this other container. Now, if you actually use these containers that are made for ice cream, for homemade ice cream, it doesn't get like, like frostbitten at the top, if you know what I mean. It don't get ice crystals, it don't get like freezer burnt, that's what I meant. It doesn't get freezer burnt. So I would suggest if you don't own any of these DIY ice cream maker containers to get you some. They will really help a lot in storage of homemade ice cream. Then I put the lid on it, stick it in the freezer for about two hours. 